Hello everybody, Arctic here, and welcome to the 10 best games of 2016 as far as I am concerned. In my opinion, this is strictly my opinion, so it is subject to opinion. <laughs> We're starting off good here. Anyways, let's go ahead and roll into these. These games were the games that I enjoyed the most, that I got the most enjoy uh, most fun out of. In fact, there's only one game on this list I haven't, two games on this list I haven't played, and even then I've watched streams and I've enjoyed plenty, and I intend to buy both of them. So, with any, without further ado, here we go. Number 10, No Man's Sky. Now I know what you're all thinking, but that was on your worst games list. I know. Well, see, No Man's Sky had so much hype behind it, it was destined to fail. There was just no pulling out of that. They would have had to have delivered a diamond wrapped in, 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 in rubies, covered in sapphire, surrounded in turkey bacon, because I don't eat regular bacon. Shut up. Uh, anyways, <laughs> they would have had to have just delivered this gem, this masterpiece, in order to have pulled out of the nosedive. But Beneath the Failure was a pretty good game. I enjoyed the living daylights out of it. It was just overhyped. If you liked survival exploration, if you liked having countless planets, yes, they did get a little old after a while, but still, so many planets, so much to do, so much to see, so much more than... Anyways, um, and then we got the Foundation update. And the Foundation update both moke and made and break, uh, broke the game. You see, prior to the Foundation update, it was dead, it was gone. But... First of all, they earned a lot of respect for holding through, pushing through, and managing to make something out of this. And two, they brought a lot of game modes that helped bring people back. They fixed a lot of the things people didn't like. And so that's the biggest reason why this game falls in at number 10, is because they did such a good job pulling out of the nosedive. Were there other games that were probably better than it? Probably. But I enjoyed this one enough that I can say that I have more hours put into this game this year than any other game on my Steam library. So, number nine. Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. Now this was the newest game by Coffin. That it was released October 7th and it's gotten a cool update with the um, custom mode. But the biggest thing was is it completely revolutionized the way the franchise was built. Well, not really built, but the way that it played. Prior to the prior to sister location all of the games were sit and survives they were all ah, ah, that's it that's all you did was sit in one place and try not to die which in and of itself was a brilliant thing but it's been overdone and oversaturated to the point that it needed uh, something else so this game had a linear story each time there was a puzzle a specific one almost all of them are still sit and survives but each one changed. In fact, it wasn't until custom night that you got a singular location. So, for just the amount of change that it brought around to itself, I, I really have to give this game my number nine because, Scott, you, 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 re, you, 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 you restruck gold. Number eight, super hot, super hot. Yes, super, not, super hot came out in 2016, early 2016, February, in fact. It was a Kickstarter title. It took some time to get going. Um, I played the beta. I did all the stuff. I actually pre-ordered it and everything. Oh, my gosh. It was so enjoyable because time only moves when you move. I would have been screwed regardless because I cannot sit still. Have you noticed this? Look at me. I'm swinging that side to side. Things would have moved at normal speed. Anyways. <laughs> um... The game went so well. It was a really, really fantastic idea. A really, really fantastic game. In fact, the only reason it's not higher up this list was because... Well, there wasn't enough wasn't enough gameplay. I, I beat the game too early. I felt like it could have been longer. And that's the biggest reason why it didn't soar to new heights. Um, but the game had so much to do, and with the whole fact they have a VR version of it, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to get a VR headset, which hopefully will be happening this next year. So... Oh my gosh, and I, and as soon as that happens, oh, you're gonna, this game's going to get me all over again, just because super hot, so fun, so fun. Number seven, Pokemon Go. So many downloads, I mean, holy fuck. But the servers, they just could not handle it. And, and the tracking was broken at launch. So many issues drove away the fan base. But they sparked new life into the franchise. 
both into the franchise as whole, but and they managed to fix things in the game that brought people back. So, I spent six hours at a park walking during one of the events. It was the 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 the, the um think uh, the November event. I think it was the one before Thanksgiving. Walking for six hours, catching you know catching creatures. The whole fact that we've got nests and all this stuff, um, all of this other stuff. It just Mm. It's really, really nice. They did a lot to fix it, and this this game did a lot to revitalize a franchise that, while it wasn't dead, certainly could still have used a little bit of help. Number six, Stardew Valley. A game that feels more like Harvest Moon than I care to admit. In fact, it kind of was made because of Harvest Moon. Um, my gosh. Stardew Valley was a fantastic game. I love the living daylight side of it. I think I'm going to probably play it in a stream one of these days because it's just a game I love so much. Um, play it. I don't, I, I've made a couple episodes playing it, but other than that, I play it off on my own free time just because it's not a game I feel is good Let's Play material. Maybe stream material, but not Let's Play material. But, oh my gosh, it sold over 1 million copies well over 1 million copies and for the first couple months it was one of the best selling games in Steam, well, on Steam. It was fantastic, even with the low graphics and everything, it was just there was so much love about this game and I was so glad it came out. Number 5, World of Warcraft Legion. Yes, this is an expansion, but this expansion brought us a new class, a new level cap, yanked us out of our damn garrisons and relit my interest in WoW. Prior to Legion, I had lost all interest in, in WoW. I got to the end on Warlords, I capped out three characters, just trying to trying to stay interested. But even capping out the first character, I was just like, ugh. And I played a little bit here and there because of Steph Signetti, um on her server, where I have almost capped another character. No, I have capped another character, but I did that in Legion. But other than that, I was done. This expansion's pre-sold, pre-orders sold 3.3 million copies, and I was one of them. It out-pre-ordered Cataclysm. Holy shit. Um, this, 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 this expansion gave new life to an MMO that was dying, and it makes me so happy to be able to put it on this list just because a game that I've been playing since Wrath of the Lich King may last just a couple more years. Number four, Doom. Ah, Doom. Doom reignited the arena shooter. It rebooted the Doom series. It gave us, it showed us what games in the style could be like and that they could still rock our socks off. It was the second best selling game in North America and UK at release. Literally losing out to Uncharted 4, just an established franchise done by, you know, by a fantastic dev company. So, yes, id Software, fantastic dev company, Naughty Dog. Holy fuck. Um, I mean, it was just, it, it sold over a million copies by August. It did fantastic. The game was amazing. It was action-packed. Got your blood going. Everything about it was just, go, 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 destroy, kill, Rah! Oh my gosh, Doom. I loved it so much. It's such a... Oh. Number three. Pokemon Sun and Moon. Pokemon Sun and Moon is one of the fastest selling Nintendo games in all of Nintendo history. And I mean, period. Uh, it sold over 10 million sh in, in the first week. Um, well, it shipped over 10 million in the first week, which, holy cow! They've done multiple events to help keep things going. They did a lot to revitalize it. They did a lot to just shake up the foundation of everything. And it, it just, it, re it thanks to Pokemon Go, which relit the entire fan base, it's just like soaring to new heights. It's doing fantastic. Number two, Final Fantasy XV. Now, this game went through development hell. It began development in 2006. It, it went through multiple titles. It went through ev all this other stuff. So many delays. It took forever. But unlike Duke Nukem, the 15th installment in the Final Fantasy series actually did good. It looks good. It came out not looking like a dated piece of junk. Oh, it was loved on release. It sold really, real, really well. Topping the Japanese charts with a selling almost 700 thousand units in Japan alone 
It is the second bag, biggest selling Final Fantasy game since Final Fantasy 13. The Final Fantasy Bro Trip. The Bro Road Trip. Number one. Overwatch! Now don't kill me for this one, but the team-based multiplayer first-person shooter game by Blizzard Entertainment, a company that everything they touch turns to gold. I mean, even when they fail, they do good. Um, the game's open beta drew almost 10 million people. That's really the open beta. What the clusterfuck? There's just no... What? Um, it rocked out several 10 out of 10s from reviews. People just loved it. It has a 90 to 91 across all three platforms when it comes to ratings. It sold over 20 million copies, putting it in just, just over half a year. It's already in the top 50 best-selling games of all time. It did that well. <coughs> Holy cow. I just cannot wait to see where its numbers are like next year. Give it a year, give it two years. How much higher up that chart can it go? With with just everything this game has, this game, it just, oh, there's, there's, there's boundless amounts of love I can throw at this game. So, Overwatch definitely takes my number one slot for best game of 2016. Well, thank you all so much for watching this. If you liked it, you can hit that like button. Now, if you're new here, you can hit that subscribe button. And you know what? Wait. I would love to hear what you think, what your picks of the year were. Do, you, do your opinions differ from mine? Please go ahead and give me your top games of 2016 down below. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. I got some good input from uh, the worst games. Let's see what we can get from the best games. But anyways, until next time, you guys have fun. I will see you later. See you guys next year. Bye, guys.